Hello everybody, welcome back to another Squealing Pig Guitars video. I'm Ben, and today we're going to be running through the history of the Les Paul and going through the reissues of the custom shop. So, let's get started. So this is the first guitar we're going to be going over today. This is a 1954 reissue from the custom shop. This was obviously modelled after a 54, um, a 1954 Les Paul. So we basically have two P90 pickups, true P90s, no hum cancelling or anything, it's just raw P90s. Have a wrap round tailpiece, and you can see here this tailpiece has no intonation marks, it's honestly just a bar and it's wrapped over. You can adjust it here with the screws though to go either higher or lower. Um, volume and tone, and then we have a nice rosewood neck and a nice natural back. So this was basically the first update for the Les Paul in 1954. The first Les Paul was released in 1952. So initially you had a long tailpiece and then they upgraded it just to this wraparound tailpiece. So that's the 54. So this is now an upgraded version of the 54, you can say. So this is an R6 from uh, basically a reissue of the 1956 model. We have an ABR1 bridge and a stock tailpiece, and this is basically going to uh, improve your intonation and tuning because you obviously have saddles that you can adjust on their own. Um, so apart from that, we still have two P90 pickups, just like the 1954 model, and we have a dark back, which is you know really really sexy. Um, tune is the same, but yeah, pretty much the only thing that changed in this area was the tailpiece and the bridge. The neck carb is kind of similar, maybe a little bit slimmer, um, but yeah, this is the 19. So the next one now is a 57, from 1957, and um, basically this is it's still a, a gold top, uh, really nice like kind of deep gold, but we basically get upgraded to PAF pickups, so here are the first 57 classics, um, and apart from that you still have the ABR one bridge piece and the tail piece. Um, so you find that in this area some of them were natural backs, some of them were dark backs, um, but this particular model, obviously being a reissue, a R7, is aged um, by, I believe it was the Murphy Labs, but it was, uh, it was from early noughties, so this will have actually been done by, um, I forgot his name now, Tom Murphy, yes, this would have been done by Tom Murphy himself. Um, but yeah, as you can see, lovely lacquer uh, like checking, a couple of chips in the finish. It's probably one you need to see in person to fully see all the lacquer checking and stuff on the neck, it's, it's beautiful. Um, binding is aged slightly with the amber coat. Um, but yeah, this is a really, really nice piece, this. So yeah, this is the 57 um, R7 reissue.
this is when we start having some fun. This is when we start getting some translucent finishes. So this is a 58, um, an R8 basically from the custom shop. As you can see, this is kind of done in like a cherry sunburst. But in, in terms of specs, we have quite a lot of similarities to the 57. We've got the PF pickups, bridge piece, ABR, one, and the tailpiece. Uh, the difference with these is they have slightly rounder necks, they're quite full. I mean, 58 are kind of renowned for their massive kind of baseball back necks. Um, and it has a really dark red back. And on the front, you'd basically find what they call factory bursts. So their original ones were very dark, kind of red with like, kind of like a yellowish center. And as they age, you got all the rest of the bursts, like lemon bursts and tobacco bursts and that kind of thing. So this is kind of where the Les Paul started really, as we know it today. Um, with the, the burst. So this is a 59, um, an R9 from the custom shop, and basically now the difference here is that we get a more flamier top, um, and basically the, the main spec that changes is the neck. So some would say this is like the, uh, the epitome of a Les Paul, it's the perfect kind of neck card where it's rounded, it's still got a bit of chunk, but it's not as chunky as the 58, so nice rounded kind of circular neck. Um, but in terms of specs with the same thing, the same pickups, same bridge, and same tailpiece, you find in this area as well that the um, flame tops are a little bit more, you know, extravagant, a little bit more pinstripey, um, as you can see on this one. Um, we had yeah, obviously changes from example to example. Yeah, this is the 1959. <laughs> So this is the last version of the Les Paul that we have in stock and um, to be honest, before the customs, this really is kind of like the last rendition of that era. So this is a 60s, um, an R0. And basically the main difference is obviously the figuring of the top. Again, these were very kind of high grade tops with the kind of flame in them. Um, you've got different style knobs. You have the reflector top knobs um, with the kind of amber uh, side things. You want to see them close. Um, but in terms of specs, we've got quite a lot of similarities. So again, wraparound tailpiece, ABR1 bridge, humbucker pickups. Um, and then the main difference is the neck. So the 60s are kind of renowned uh, for being the slimmest Les Paul profile. So this is kind of 
reminiscent of what a slim tapered neck would be in the modern day now. Um, a lot of modernized poles are actually modeled off this neck carve. Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful example. As I said, this is, I believe, a dark burst finish in VOS. Um, we have a stunning Les Paul. And I guess the, the biggest thing to know about all these Les Pauls from this era, especially R8, R9, and R0, is that especially now with the custom shop, they will mix match like kind of specs. So you can get an R8, for example, with a massive flame top, and you can get an R0 with basically no flame. But the kind of the neck carves stay the same throughout the eras. So there's not that much difference, but it's just a little play of playable factors. <laughs> guitar was your favorite that we covered today um, but as I said thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next Squealing Pig Guitars video see you soon rock up